Dean of our Word of Faith Bible Institute, Pastor Stephen Britta. And we're also speaking to the operations manager of Shepherd's Field Rehab Center and also a student of WAFBI, Clive Bushby. Good morning, Pastor Stephen. Good morning, Clive. How are you guys this morning? Good, good. Great. Thank you very much. Good. 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 I'm just going to get right into it because we're having a wonderful communion service this morning, but also a lot of questions. I've got questions for you about WAFBI before we do communion. I'm just going to start right off with you, Clive. Clive, tell us, how did you come to Christ? You know, it was the 27th of July uh, on a Wednesday, 10 to 10, 2011. I remember it precisely. I used to live a life of recklessness. Um, I was on drugs. And I, was, I lived in the States for some time and then also got arrested twice, can you believe it? And my life of brokenness Whoa. continued when I came back in 2008. And in um, 2011, I actually, you know, 2011, I lost everything. I had to move in with my parents. And from there, it just went downhill. And then um, I remember one night I got this message from someone, a, a long message. And the, the, only the two words that I can actually remember on the message was through God. And I just felt this peace come into my room and I knew exactly what I had to do. So the next morning I went to church and I found the pastor outside. He was busy fixing a few things. And then I spoke to him. And then that day he took me into the, into the church and I gave my life to the Lord at 10 to 10. It was on a Wednesday, 27th July. And I got set free of everything on that day. And from there on, things just change. Now, I just want to say to everybody, yeah. we're going to have an interesting discussion this morning. And if you want to leave us a comment, if you have some questions about Word of Faith Bible Institute, whether it's the night school or the day school, leave us a question in the comments and we'll try and get back to all of the questions as best as we can. So I'm going to continue asking Clive another question. Clive, now you came to the Lord and this was your experience. You came out of this brokenness. But yes. how did it come to the point that you actually became a student of Word of Faith Bible Institute? Why? Well, look, I first started um, with night school in 2017. In 2018, I gave it a skip and went back in 2019 to night school. And in 2020, I got an opportunity to be part of the day school. Um, I needed to, to have an understanding of God's word in order to equip myself. I also needed to know how to apply God's word to my life in order for me to walk in the destiny God has set out for me. And I needed to know the truth. I needed to know why I believe what I believe. Mm. So that is, that is the main reason. I needed to know who God was. I need to know the essence of God, who he was, and how he, how, how he um, managed or how he, he, he moved in my life and how, how things work in the kingdom. So that's basically why I needed I need an understanding of God's word in my life. So you must have had a lot of questions at, and when you went to Bible school and you must have been, did you, do you feel like you've gotten answers to a lot of those questions you had at that point? Yes, most definitely. Like most you were definitely. saying. Yes. <laughs> that, now you became a student, but I want to ask Pastor Stephen, how does somebody actually become a student? Because Clive became a student, but how, how does that work? Well, firstly, how can uh, someone become a student? Yeah, before I answer that question, I'm just got, hmm. sitting here listening to Clive, and uh, yeah, believe it or not, a lot of it I don't know his reasons why we didn't go and rehearse exactly what he's actually going to say. He did his part, I did yeah. my part, and we weren't together. It's an amazing thing to listen to him yeah. and hear the excitement of why he actually came to Bible school, what he's got out of the Bible school. He's now a third year student, and uh, it's wonderful to hear that there's a lot of answers that have come to his questions. I've seen a change in his life so it's amazing to see from his perspective exactly what's actually happened to him so in answer to your question uh, if anybody wants to know more about WAFBI or word of faith bible institute they're welcome to give us a call give our office a call on 041-399-4414 or to send a uh, email to info at wafbi.org.za and then obviously uh, put the questions there and we'll supply all the answers. Absolutely. Now, now I'm going to probably ask that a few times throughout so people can get the number or get the information. But I'm coming back to you, Clive. I have a question. Did you ever think, this is not prepared, did you ever think you would be in ministry? Ever? Never. Never, <laughs> never, never. I tell you, I think about that often. I think about that often. I always <laughs> share with, with my wife and I think, 
to myself, you know, if I look at 15 years back where I was before and where I was and where I am now, I would never, ever think, ever. But you know, God always has a plan. He always sees the bigger picture. We only see till here, but God sees the end. And I'm so grateful for that. I would have never, never, ever. Was it, was it a shock for your family and your friends? Say again? I didn't hear that. Was it a shock for your family and your friends to see you Mo change your definitely. life so drastically? Most definitely. Most definitely. Only, only God can do that, yeah. But you are in ministry now, but you're doing the full-time Bible school and the ministry, and you're balancing both of those. How has yeah. that been? Has it been a challenge or has it been rewarding? How has that affected your ministry to be in Bible school as well? Tia, it's been challenging and very rewarding at the same time. Um, it really equips me to to build character and character is what is what you need to go for character is not, the anointing is great but you need the character to step into that anointing without that character you will falter you need the character and there's also worked on my my commitment it's also worked on on me committing to come here every single day you know before that you know because actually I, i'm very very busy but you know what it's it's about that commitment being here every single day and also values, you know, it, 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 it's like kind of like see what my values to 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 match my values matching mm. up to God's values. That's the the, the 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 thing there is that we need to match our values and our perception to God's values and perception, and also to develop, um, you know, in my ministry, develop skills. You know, the boldness to to evangelize, the 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 boldness to go and talk about Jesus, the boldness to lead people to the Lord. And um, that's what I received here, you know, and to communicate effectively and to serve. Serving is a big thing. And obviously, uh, serving in humility. You know, I'll tell you a quick story just quickly is that I remember when mm. this is now taking out, getting taken out your comfort zone. We had to do a team building. Yeah. And I had to, in front of everybody, I had to cry like a little baby that's been uh, taken, like a toy taken away from him. So there I was, a 45 year old man lying on the phone crying like a baby. That to me was, I'll never ever forget that. And that to me, mm -hmm. that is just part of uh, uh, character building and, and, and getting rid of all the pride and being humble in that res respect. So, so yeah, I, I, that is how it affects my ministry, how to deal with people on a daily basis and how to be fair towards people and how to see the good in people. Can I just add something? And that is, yes. listening to Clive, he is a very busy person. And I just saw an opportunity to put in an advert there. And that is in our third year, they do a practical, a practical part of the course. They do actual practical ministry. And so what we've done is mm -hmm. we've looked at his program and we've looked at our program and we've made every effort to accommodate him where we can, because we're encouraging people to have a ministry and to be involved in the ministry. And so we've adapted our program and he's made adaptions on his side as well to accommodate one another yeah. so that he actually can do this. Yeah. And it actually benefits us. It benefits him. His drug rehabilitation skills we've tried to use in the Bible school as well, because this man knows what he's talking about. I've never been on drugs. I don't expect uh, I don't profess to be an expert at, on drug addiction where he is the expert on drug addiction. And obviously we've tried to accommodate that where we could. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's really, uh, he's, he's been also prepared to make huge changes to his own schedule. Wow, that's incredible. Oh, uh, something I else I'd like to just, sorry, uh, uh, yeah. Theo, I no, just want to thank you, for, I'm interrupting you. But uh, I, I, I'm being, uh, you know, uh, my attention drawn to the fact that all the people that are commenting and the people that have logged in, I'm just seeing names upon names, yes. FBI students, night students, day students, uh, Pastor Manny Eagle, Carmel Eagle, you name it. I'm just seeing comments coming in and everybody logged in. We want to thank you profusely and all the, the pastors that are logged in. Thank you for the interest. It's always nice to uh, see the interest. I mean, for us, whether it's for two people or it's for 100 people, it's enjoyable to do what you, we're doing now to share the goodness of the gospel, to share of WAFPI, to share what the changes in our lives. But it's absolutely wonderful. They're tagging, they're sharing. And uh, thank you very much for the support yeah. is all I, I want to end up with. Yeah, so, so on what Pastor Stephen is saying, if you know somebody who is considering doing Bible college, if they're thinking about, if they said to you, I'm thinking about doing a Bible course, I want to know a bit more about the Bible, don't, don't know my Bible as well, or somebody who's got time maybe on a Monday night, 
or if it's full time, it's nine till 12 every weekday. So it's not that difficult to get to it yeah. if, you, if you've got a, a, b a small business and you can do that at the same time. So if you know somebody Excellent. who's thinking yeah. about it or if you're thinking about it, just tag those people, let them know so that they can hear Clive's story so they can find out what it's really like to do this, to speak yes. with somebody who's doing it currently. So yes. my question to you now, Clive, is I think a lot of Christians know, we know that we must disciple. We know that we've got to get people saved. We know we don't want people to go to hell. We want them to go to heaven. But it's always a difficult thing to start a conversation with somebody about salvation. How many people have you, do you know, did you count how many people you've led to Christ in this time that you've been at Walk Beyond? You know what, Tio? I have, when I have the opportunity, I, I do so. When I have opportunity to speak about and to witness for the Lord, mm. I do so. Um, I cannot tell you how many people. Uh, it's, it's a lifestyle. I cannot tell you how many people. And remember that we also, be, we, also, we also need to make sure that we seed planters. We plant seeds. Some people reject, but they don't reject me. They reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. But the thing Message. is, it's about planting seeds. Because the Bible talks about, you know, the Bible talks about uh, some plants, in some water, God makes the plant grow. So it's about planting seeds in everyday life. But the thing is, is that I just, I just, I have a, I have such a, a passion to see people saved. I have a passion. I have mm -hmm. an evangelistic spirit. I love it, and um, that is why part of why I'm here to get equipped in order to do this my way forward. Then I'm just going to leave that question to Pastor Stephen. I know that you're also not just the Wafi ID, and you've also got a lot going on, and you also have a passion to see souls saved. How has this being part of WAFBI, becoming a dean there, as well as on top of your normal job and everything, how has that actually affected your life? And how do you feel about what Clive just said about the lifestyle and soul saving and that kind of thing? It's a broad question. My first, <laughs> my first uh, answer to that is, where do I start? Have you got a couple of hours? And then uh, I'm glad <laughs> also, Tia, that you came back to me because I was beginning to think that you know, it's uh, all the questions are going to <laughs> my student, yeah. So I'm feeling I was feeling left out for a minute there. Now, uh, it's actually funny that you asked that question. I was just listening to when you asked uh, Clive, uh, did he ever think he was going to be in ministry? I was sitting here thinking those exact words, what you were asking, and that is, why am I sitting here? I would never have dreamed of being a, a Bible school dean. Uh, it is quite something to balance all uh, the priorities. It's amazing how a lot of people don't know the first thing about what a Bible school is. And they say, oh, that's quite nice. That's like your little hobby that you do. That's the way they see it. And uh, they don't realize that we run it just like a school. We, we're looking to, to grow students up, prepare them for, never mind ministry, prepare them for life. Mm -hmm. And often uh, we have youngsters coming here where they are, people working and coming part-time or they come full-time. There's uh, age groups, youngsters, but then we've also got other age groups coming. And what they're really doing is uh, they come here and they say, where's my life at? We've yeah. had some people come here very broken and that their lives in a mess. They had, they had very good jobs and uh, the rest of their life is in a complete mess or things went wrong at the work and they're unemployed. And they've come here for a time and we've, we've actually done our part in trying to put their lives together again. And just recently, I mean, really now this year, in the last couple of months, we've seen a couple of students that have now got jobs and that they're stable jobs outside of uh, WAFBI. And they prepared for the life to come. And they're finishing off. And uh, they're part-time jobs, full-time jobs. You name it. And then they also sharing their testimonies with other people, seeing all these people change, seeing their lives change, makes it all worthwhile. There are times that it crosses everybody's mind. You think, what in the world am I doing this for? I think that happens in anybody, whether you're, or no matter where you are involved in your life. And uh, we look at the results and we look at the fruit and we say, it's people's lives changing, balancing priorities. Yeah, that's yeah. quite a challenge. Because as I say, um, uh, normal uh, employment doesn't understand the Bible school and Bible school doesn't always understand normal employment. And you've got to be the, you know, you straddle two fences. So yeah, it can be challenging, but the rewards are great seeing the changes in people's lives. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Now, I think now I'm going to come back to Clive, Pastor Stephen. <laughs> so he's going to speak again. And I think one of the things is that you, you were speaking about your life before and how you came to Christ and that there was a lot of drugs involved, a lot of things involved. Now that I can only imagine how much brokenness that left in your life. Yeah. And what is the biggest change for you personally that you've seen since being at Wafi, since becoming, mm-hmm. you know, being educated in the, the different topics that you've learned about? What was the biggest change that something on the inside that changed for you? Now, I just mm-hmm. before you answer that, I'm giving you a moment to think. Your wife just she was on the comments as well. She's one of our top fans. Fans, welcome Renee. And she said, I love the fact that the Holy Spirit can move freely. Waf BI is amazing. Thank so that's you. a wonderful comment there. And I've got Vida Fulun saying, Yes, Clive, Amen. God will draw if we speak the gospel. And I've just got so many comments, so many Bible, Bible school students just commenting. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. Now, Clive, back to you. What was the biggest change that you saw in your life personally, or that you had an inward change since joining WFBI? Yeah, look, there was, there, was, there was quite a few changes. I can't highlight any one. It's really a transformation within myself. The way I look, the way I look at things, the way I, I respond to things, the way I talk, the way I carry myself is completely new. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.17 talks about that. So for me, for me, it's humility. For me, it's not compromising. For me, uh, the biggest thing for me was to, that, to know that I'm a re- representative of the kingdom of God. I'm a representative of the kingdom of life. So therefore, you know, you got to look at that and you got to, you also got to realize that you cannot do the old things you used to do. You cannot also, because sometimes you would be the only uh, Bible that people read, your mm-hmm. lifestyle. So your lifestyle changes. Mm-hmm. And remember, if you are represented of the kingdom when you get saved, when you're a believer, you're representative of that kingdom, you're a diplomat. So when you are a representative of word of faith, Bible college as well, you must remember that people look up, people look at you, people, people uh, 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 look at your lifestyle. And also it reflects who you are. You know, the Bible talks about Matthew 10, verse 8. It talks about uh, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons. Freely you uh, receive, freely you give. And this is exactly what we get. We, we get impartation. We receive so much. It is, we need to go out there and give back. We need to go out there. What do we do with all information? What do we do with, mm. with all the impartation? We mm. need to go out there and impart into people's lives to mm. speak about the word of the Lord to get people saved. This is why we're here. This is the, the essence of God's heart. Amen. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Now, have you actually, that was good. That was preaching to me. Yay. Thank you. Have, you. have you ever prayed for the sick, Clive? Have you ever gone out to pray for the sick? Have you ever seen healings happen? Yes. I, I, I'll give you two examples. Uh, there's many, I'll give you two. I got called to pray for a lady in Algoa Park. She just got released from... Um, uh, uh, um, Livingston Hospital. She couldn't walk. Her back was completely out, and there's nothing they could do for her. So I, well, I, I had a connection with Park. So they called me to pray for the lady, and off I went. And I said, "Lord, you better just come through for me here." Yeah? And got to the lady's house. I realized that the mom was there. She wasn't saved. Led her to the Lord mm. as well. And then I prayed for the lady. I anointed her with oil, and she couldn't move. She was lying on bed on the bed like this, and she couldn't move at all. And um, and then I started praying for, you know, um, and then as I left, I said, no, you, by the end of the week, you will get out of the bed in Jesus' name. As I left, about five minutes as I left, I started getting photos of her dancing in her room and shouting for joy. God healed her back. And she said that when, we, when I prayed, um, she said that there was a warm sensation from the back of her head right down to her feet. Now, that is by no means me. That is just the power of the Holy Spirit working through me. I'm just a conduit. You know, so one of many, and then the guys at, at, at the farm as well, they, they know not to come to me and ask for headache pills. I just took my hand on their head, start praying, healing. They know already, you know, they're asking for pills and headache tablets. The thing is, is that also there was another incident, but it wasn't healing, but listen to this. We went evangel. We, uh, we walked past with the team, we walked past this one guy, and God said, we talked to him about a job. So we went and spoke, we spoke to him, and, and he actually needed a job. He actually needed he had no job. He hasn't had a job for quite a while. And so we prayed for, laid hands on him and prayed for him for a job. It wasn't three minutes later. He came running from the back with mm. shouting for joy. Mm. He just received the message that he must start work on Monday. So, so that's amazing. And this guy was like overwhelmed to see how God came, God came through for him. So these are just one of many testimonies that we are to go out there and just release the power of God into, into, into the nation. 
Pastor Stephen, anything to say on that? Well, firstly, praying uh, for the second. Well, the first thing, uh, before I even comment on that, I see there it's talking about comments. I'm seeing people's comments coming through. Yeah, yo, it's actually, I could actually just say to Clive, you carry on. I'm going to just read all the comments because it's the feedback is incredible to just hear the different aspects people are putting out and they, they, they respond back to us. It's actually very interesting to read. And uh, I see Sunay Sonapul of South Korea. She's on as well. So we've got it's people we know, but we made the effort to actually dial in. So it's actually, it's wonderful to see all the comments and it's actually, it's good for our feedback so that we can see where we can improve. But I suppose I must answer your uh, question. And that is, yes, uh, when he, <laughs> oh, it would be nice. Eh? Uh, and I see Pastor Jimmy going on as well. Thank you, Pastor Jimmy, uh, the president of WAF BI, our boss. So uh, I look at and listen to what he's actually saying. And I'm saying, that's the whole idea of what we're trying to do at WAF BI. It's not about head knowledge. It's not yeah. just about uh, going into books. It's about practically doing the work of the ministry. And that is praying for the sick. That is going to hospitals and schools and on outreaches and going out the uh, food packs that we've had over lockdown. And what more in this coronavirus time than to be ministering healing to people. Yeah. And that means you're trusting God for your own health and not condemning anybody that gets sick, but uh, going for, to them and praying for them. And obviously we've had to do that rather remotely. But praying for them, and I think our Christian lives have been challenged and uh, motivated and stimulated in this lockdown time To because the reality has been the coronavirus has been real. Uh, we've actually, we know of people who have actually died, students in our Bible school that have actually died. They've actually also lost loved ones that have died. So look, it's real. Let's not beat about the bush. But we've seen incredible recovery. Students yeah. that got corona that recovered. So if you want to get me going for talking for hours, which I won't do to you, it's on that subject of healing. We very much believe in the practical working of the ministry and believing God's word that it actually changes our lives. And uh, uh, healing from sickness is just one of those aspects. No, absolutely. So it's very practical. You're going into hospitals, you go into schools, it's streets ministry. It's a very practical time at WAFBI. But also, there's also the theory side of it where you're learning a lot yeah. and different topics. And I just want to ask Clive, what was your, what has been your favorite topic throughout these three years? The favorite well, look, one? The, 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 the best one, I've, the best one for me is definitely soul winning. That to me is just me. I love doing that. And then in the name of Jesus and next term, we have a subject called uh, the ministry of the evangelist that I cannot wait for that. I will get a hundred percent for that. I know <laughs> I love evangelism. So that's my, my favorite topic. Yes. So, yeah. Pastor Stephen, I can see you're laughing. Do you, do you have a favorite topic to teach? Do you teach? <laughs> well, firstly, I I, I'm teach. not surprised. I, I mean, I don't think anybody would have not guessed that his favorite topic is evangelism. So, uh, uh, I do teach, and uh, I have some favorite subjects as well. Uh, by the way, Joan Keeling, welcome. Wendy McDonald from Cape Town, welcome. And uh, uh, I, I'm seeing comments, and I'm trying not to be distracted by comments, but it's actually wonderful to see people are watching. Uh, favorite Absolutely. subjects. Funny enough, I enjoy the ministry of the evangelist incredibly as well. I've also enjoyed Bible doctrines is another subject I enjoy because it's also giving your theological basis for what we believe. And Christ the healer, there's no, uh, no wow. prizes for guessing that one. That's no surprise because that's also the basis for why we believe healing. We even have a course uh, called Deliverance that we talk about uh, demonic spirits. Do they actually exist? Uh, is it actually a reality? I know it's contentious, but uh, it's a subject that we get on. So it's one of my favorites as well. So there's a lot of them. Gifts of the Spirit, I love as well. So uh, it's difficult to actually just pin it down to one or two subjects. But it, it's, and you can hear it's the practical subjects. It's the practical doing of the ministry that uh, uh, really stirs my heart as well. 
Now let's just get a bit to the admin side of things. Pastor Stephen, what is the difference between going to day school and going to night school? The major difference is that uh, for a day school, it's really geared for, uh, I, I keep saying youngsters, but it's not really just youngsters, but I suppose it's, it's those that have just left school or those that, uh, uh, that don't really know where they're going yet and they're just getting going. They want to know more of, of uh, the Bible and Christianity. And they uh, can commit their time from 9 to 12 in the day and then they'll have something like a part-time job or flexible employment in the afternoon, which we encourage. And then obviously the night school is ready for people that are full-time committed in their work and they can only come in the evening and that's from uh, 6 to 9 on a Monday night. They follow the same curriculum as the day school. They take a year longer to complete it because obviously there's less time available uh, to do the, get through the actual curriculum. And that's really the essential difference between the two. I just want to I just want to say I just, I just want to say uh, day school is the best. So I've been I heard, in school, I heard somebody but say that is Mandla, the best. <laughs> No Mandla was saying if you can do the day school, do the full time yeah. because it changes your life. Yeah. Um, so she was commenting on that. But if you're a member of a, another church and you're not a member of Word of Faith specifically, can you still join the Word of Faith Bible Institute? We actually encourage it. We encourage okay. people that if they are uh, in a church that maybe doesn't have their own Bible school or the, the Bible school is remote and our Bible school is more convenient and closer to them to come and they are interested in coming, more than welcome. The last thing we are trying to do is take people out of their own church. By all means, keep going to your church. That's where you get fed on a daily basis. That's where you're committed. That's where your, your ministry commitment is. What we do ask is while you're at Bible school for the time that you were there, give us as much full of your full commitment as you possibly can. But obviously, we don't want clashes with their particular church. It's for a season. It's for a time until the end of the course. So, uh, and, and we even encourage people uh, to come and actually uh, uh, share of what's happening in their church. Not, eh, we learn from one another. There's no one perfect church at all. We learn from one another. And it's actually interesting to hear some of their perspectives of how mm. they see the Bible and the Christianity. It's, it's actually a learning for all of us. They're more than welcome. Oh, wonderful. Now, a big trend has been for people to do a gap year. And uh, is it possible? Is it, oh, does WAPI sort of have that option where people finishing matric, students finishing matric can come and do one year at WAPI? More than welcome. Uh, uh, you will be coming for a year and the chances that you are going to leave after that year, we will not debate. I will tell you the chances that you'll stay are probably pretty, pretty high. But you're more than welcome to come for a gap year. And it's really what we try and run this Bible school like. And that goes for the night school. It goes for the day school. It's a, effectively in a hospital. People come here. They probably want to know more about the Bible, but often they've got uh, all things going wrong in their lives. And we're saying, come here. If it's going to take a year for you to really change, then come here for a year. If, it's, if you change in six months, that's still worth it. Come here. Come to the Bible school, that gap year, and they find themselves. They often find where they're going. And that's why I'm so excited about some of these people finding places of employment, employment uh, after being here because... Uh, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted them to find themselves so they know what direction they're going. So thank you for that. I think it's time for us now to move over to communion. Now, Pastor yeah. Stephen, I understand you're going to leave, lead us in communion this yeah. morning. Okay, well, you can go and do that. Hmm. My, uh, probably my last, my last comment on commenting is uh, <laughs> Rainer Vessels, I've been told, Rainer Vessels from the USA. Zama Barto is a Bible school student, Julian Sp uh, Jillian Spiller of Swark of Mood, my goodness me. <laughs> and then Marianne Litter, Pastor Marianne Litter, one of our Bible school lecturers, she's watching as well. There's a couple of Bible school lecturers were, are watching. So thank you very much. We always do, and we do really appreciate our lecturers. So now we're talking communion, and I really trust that uh, everybody watching has got their emblems available. They got their their juice of some sort. I've got red grape juice here, and I've got aha. I have grape juice. 
and, and, and juice. Theo's got it. Oh, yes, our people. And whether it's, uh, uh, I've got a bit of half a snack of bread here. There's ours. And then there's, <laughs> uh, so whatever you're going to use. Whatever you uh, have available. Ready. And then I'm going to give Clive, he's over here. Clive's got his in his hand. I've got mine in my hand. Right, so I've got my emblems. He's got his emblems. And my wife was so kind as to make sure it was perfectly around the little piece that she pressed out here. How do you like that? The school teacher was always perfectionist. <laughs> so uh, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took this, he took a bread and he took uh, uh, the juice, what, uh, what the Bible says, the wine, but uh, we're going to, uh, we're using juice. And we're saying here that uh, the bread and the wine is telling us about, reminding us of the fact that Jesus' body was broken for us. And his blood flowed for us to be free of sickness. He was broken. The Bible says in Isaiah 52 uh, that he was marred beyond human likeness. He suffered for us that we will not suffer. He suffered bodily. He suffered with his blood for forgiveness of sins and for everything that causes us pain. Even uh, 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 mental pain, emotions, all that God prayed for it all. Jesus himself as God in the flesh prayed for it all. So as we take of this uh, bread and as we take the bread and we remember what god has done for us through his son jesus christ we take the bread you may take the bread now we've got quite a piece to chew through yeah <laughs> and we remember his body broken for us and now as you drink the juice we remember the blood shed for us and that even through Corona and everything and even the stresses that have come with it, Jesus himself paid for it all. We have the right to walk carefree. We, the load we must cast on to Jesus. He's paid for it. And it's by his divine power that we live and that we walk in peace. So let's, take, let's drink of the juice in remembrance of what he's done for us. And by the way, while you drink, uh, while you're drinking there, and while he's still swallowing, we just want to uh, thank Sandra Divine from Mauritius, who's also uh, dialed in. So thank you, Sandra. It's wonderful to share all of this time with all of you, and to to remember what Jesus. Because if that's what I love about communion, if it wasn't for the, uh, the what Jesus did on the cross for us in Isaiah 53. There would be no Christianity. There would be nothing for us, no hope in our lives. So uh, we remember that with fondness. God bless you. Can we take a moment, Pastor Stephen, for you um, and for Clive to just pray over those people who are watching right yes. now? And if anybody has a prayer request, send it through. I'm just going to ask Pastor Stephen, and as they are led by the Holy Spirit, to prophesy and to just pray over those people who are currently watching. Pastor mm. Stephen. There's something else we just I uh, like to mention. I don't, I don't want to get that out the way. Uh, uh, is so mm. that we can actually concentrate on actually praying for the people. And that is, I was asked to just mention our men's camp. Uh, it's a call a men's count. It's a men's camp. It's the at the end of this month, 30th to 31st of October. Here at a Word of Faith Christian Center. The uh, why they asked me to mention it is. It's going to be a time for men to come together and for us to address the issues of men to go through the Bible to mix with what uh, mix in uh, with each other, obviously with all the rules, the lockdown rules, but to mix with each other and to bring about change in people's lives because that's what we're doing all of this for to bring about change in each one's life. So you can book through the church 041-399-4400. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. So now the important yeah. stuff. That's one important. Sorry. <laughs> let me just mention, Pastor Stephen. Yes. Sorry, let me just mention that that men's encounter is taking place from the 30th of October to the 31st, that weekend of the 30th of October. And the cost is 200 Rand and you can oh, just yes. minimal. And it will be at the church. It's not a sleepover kind of thing. It's going to be at the church and it's going to be men. So we won't, women, yes. we will not be there. You'll be <laughs> away from the wives and the women. Yes, Pastor Stephen, continue. Imagine how quiet it's going to be with no ladies there. Okay, I'm not going to get myself into trouble. <laughs> so uh, in the preparation for today, 
uh, I, uh, in prayer, I had this strong sensation, the one thing that, that God spoke to me about, and that is somebody with a hip. I could actually picture on the top of the hip, top right-hand side hip, is that someone with a top right-hand side hip problem, whatever the hip is, a problem is, whether it's a, a hip replacement you've had or that you need, or it's causing pain, it's causing discomfort of some sort. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your hip and I say, in the name of Jesus, every part of your body, including that hip, coming to line with the word of God, hips line up and align with one another that, those, that the legs are straight in the name of Jesus. And all discomfort, all walking discomfort, all back pain, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever that is, it could be more than one. But in the name of Jesus, healing and health and swelling go down. And also comfort come in the name of Jesus as the word of God flows through you now as I speak. The Holy Spirit performing that healing by the word and that you are healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Every part of you healed in the name of Jesus Christ. There was also somebody with he, uh, feet problems. I happen to know somebody that had feet problems. Not a person I'm talking about. I'm talking about a person that has feet problems other than the one that I know. So I'm saying to you, it's not something that I, uh, it's, I was saying by the Spirit of God that he's spoken to me about feet. In the name of Jesus, whatever's wrong with your feet, I speak health and healing. Pain to disappear, swelling to disappear in the name of Jesus. It can, it can even be bunions. It can be anything causing pain and discomfort in your feet. That, that pain, you. I rebuke in Jesus' name. And I speak health and healing over your feet and over every part of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. There was also somebody else that the Lord spoke to me about rent. Now I know we're halfway through the month. So it's not the time to worry about rent yet. Not that we should be worrying in the first place, but that person is saying, I know it's only halfway through the month, but I'm already worrying about how I'm going to pay the rent at the end of this month. And you might even be uh, in arrears for the end of last month. In the name of Jesus, I Thank speak you. provision to you and I speak peace. Above all things, I speak peace to you in the name of Jesus. I take captive every thought contrary to the word in your minds in the name of Jesus Christ that you may believe the word of God, that God is in control of your life. He will supply your every need. And that includes, includes rent and includes what you need to be able to have a roof over your head. In the name of Jesus, I speak it right now. I speak a piece of the people's finances. This is more general. Uh, there's no uh, rocket science to realize that people need financial relief. And their finances are under pressure. But I'm speaking of it in any case to say to you, in the name of Jesus, God will supply your every need. God will look after you. He will take care of you better than any man or woman will ever take care of you. Look to the Lord. Look to Jesus. Pray to him and trust him. He will look after you. And every single person that's watching has got some financial need of some sort. I guarantee you. And we all have the same way of the addressing it. And that is look to the Lord. He will take care of you. God's love is far more than worrying about finances. I know people who have lost their lives worrying about something like forty to 60,000 rands worth of debt. And let me tell you that amount, most other people will laugh at. But if you're not a person, a person that's not used to living in debt, that's a lot of money. But why should finances or lack of finances, take away the, the, the gift of life that God has given us. And why should we be worrying and in total uh, uh, concern all the time that uh, where, where God is in control of all things. And uh, as the Bible says, why worry never added a day to anybody's life. In fact, it steals your quality of life. And yes, we all do worry at times. But may the Lord bring peace yeah. to everyone's heart watching here today. May the Lord bring peace to your hearts and minds. And that as he's taken us through this whole coronavirus thing, he will continue to take us through. Uh, I'm young and I'm, but I, I was young. I'm now old. I, older, I'd like to say. But I've never seen God's people yes, forsaken so, yeah. or their children begging for bread in the streets. And, that, and the Lord has looked after us. He will look after you. 
And that's what I really wanted to add. And people that are believing for houses and cars, I want to encourage you. That's the other words that houses and cars and a place to stay. I want to say, trust in the Lord and with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. He will make your path straight. He will provide for you. He will make a way where there's no way. That same God that we serve. That's why we in the work that we do is we fully believe that God is true to his word and his word will come to pass in every circumstance. God bless you. Well, Pastor, I'll just, uh, yes. there's just, uh, I feel there's someone with an eye. I don't know if it's a watery eye or there's an issue with the eye. Wow, amen. I, I just feel that it's either you or someone that you know that has an issue with the eye and it's a long-standing yes. issue. Yes. I come against that in the mighty in name Jesus of Jesus name. Christ. And Lord, uh, Lord, I just pray right now that the eye comes into alignment yes. with your word yes. in Jesus' name. No more eye problems. Uh, I just speak health over that eye right now in yes. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And I just want to ask Clive as well to pray, but I want to ask you specifically to pray. There's a lot of people who watch and they think, you know, I've got loved ones and maybe they are they're in brokenness, they're in drugs. And why does this person not go the path that Clive has gone? Or, you know, that, that feeling of why can't my family member just, you know, suddenly come to salvation and start serving the Lord the way Clive has. So I just yeah. want you to pray a prayer over those watching and pray, praying over those broken people in those people's lives, their family members, and to really pray for their salvation. And yeah. just for the, for, to encourage those who are currently watching. Yeah, yeah. Please. Father, right now, I lift up all those people uh, who has been asking, Lord, what about me? What about my family members? Lord, I come, I come against the, the, the power of the enemy. I come against Jesus it right name. now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray freedom. I pray for yes, salvation Lord. in all of their, yes. their lives right now. Lord, I pray for an encounter with your yes, Holy Lord. Spirit. Even when they, yes. wherever they walk, wherever they Jesus. might uh, be uh, during the day at work or they yes. sleep at night, I pray for such an encounter yes. with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I speak salvation. Lord, I pray that you will just give them the right mind. I pray yes. that, Lord, that they will wake up, Lord, just like me. I woke up and I just mm -hmm. felt the peace of God. I speak Lord. the peace, the shalom peace of God over their lives Amen. right now. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for their lives. I thank you, Lord, that you have a great plan for those individuals. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your word will not return void over their lives right now. That they will be awakened. That they, their face will, 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 will reach up to uh, the, the, the sun will shine into their face, Lord. I pray that, Lord, they will have such an awakening, Lord. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, that you will protect them. I plead the precious blood, uh, blood of Jesus Christ over yes. their lives. And I thank you, Lord, that you will do an amazing work through them. Lord, even this time of craziness, Lord. Uh, um, I just pray for Joshua 8, 1 over the lives, that, that you have commanded them to be courageous during this time. And I thank you, Lord, that you will do an amazing work and, yes, uh, and uplift them out of the split, Lord, just like Joseph was in the split, but he got uplifted, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for an encounter of your Holy Spirit in their life, in Jesus' name, right now. And Lord, Amen. I'd like to just add, I'd just like I, to pray. I, you know, it's one thing while he was praying. I just pray every, while he was praying, I just thought of every sickness, every single uh concern that uh, the, the viewers might have in the name of Jesus. May there be a release of God's spirit for a breakthrough. Not yesterday, today, yes. not in a week's time, today in the yes. name of Jesus yeah. Christ. And through this weekend that you may see that there's a massive change in your life and that God has done a miracle that no person could possibly do. Relief from sickness of any sort. Relief from concern about loved ones who are sick. And I want to encourage those that are call themselves Christians, be quick to go out and meet the needs of other people. Get the eyes off yourself and your circumstances and meet the needs of other people. And whether it be for healing and whether it be for reassurance and material needs or spiritual needs and emotional needs, just get our eyes off ourselves. We better look at ourselves and say the same thing and say, why do we concern ourselves with what's happening in our lives look after the person next door to you and as you look after everybody else god himself looks after you so may the lord bring peace and may he bring a breakthrough in everybody's lives in the name of jesus yes. I, just, now, I just, wanna, you, I just you receive that wait uh, clive i just want to say if you receive that if you receive the yes, prayer from yeah. clive from pastor Stephen, just type in the comments i receive it and you can even say i receive it today just type that for us if you agree with those wow. prayers and if you receive that today. Yes, Clive. I just want to what Pastor talk, uh, Stephen talk about stress and worry. You remember, stress and worry are the areas of your life that you haven't surrendered to God. 
You must remember that. <laughs> so remember, look, take stock, uh, take stock of my own life as well. Stress and worry are the areas of, of your life that you haven't completely surrendered to God, that you haven't got peace about. Uh, Jackie Burgess says in the comments as well, he says, what uh, is a family. And I cannot agree more, Jackie. We are one big, massive family. I'm absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of comments and that we've already yeah. had 51 shares. And wow. we didn't even ask for shares and people have been sharing this. So that's incredible. Wow. Thank you so much for the feedback and for all of the comments. We read, we read them, we see them, we see your comments. Nomandla, uh, Mike Laird and Jackie, you were saying, and there were so many, so many new comments also coming in. I'm just looking here. Pastor Jimmy was tagging everybody. And Sandra Devine from Mauritius, we say, hello, Sandra. Thank you for joining us all the way from Mauritius. And Vida Fulyun saying, yes. All lectures are great. So we've had so much positive feedback about WAFPI, but I just want to, as we close now, I just want to give yeah. uh, Pastor Stephen a moment to just, or Clive as well, but Pastor Stephen, is there anything you would just like to say to the viewers in closing? We've spoken a lot about the Bible College. Is there anything that you feel on your heart to just say in closing about WAFPI, about joining Bible school? The, uh, okay, I see uh, Clive, uh, Clive is, I heard him go. So, yeah. Clive, you go ahead. <laughs> say what you were going to say. Go ahead. You know, there's one verse in Matthew that really, really impacted my life. And it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then he will add all these things to you. So, seek first God. Don't seek the things first. The, the thing is to seek God first. And he will add whatever you worry about, whatever's going, you're going through, seek God first. Seek his righteousness first. Live righteously. And he will add those things. Don't worry about what's, what's happening. Don't worry just seek God and he will make a way where there seems to be no way. I know that some of you are worrying about finances that we spoke about. Some of you are worrying about family members that that is not saved. But I tell you now, seek God and he will come through for you. And the only thing I want to just, uh, just capping what we've been saying for the last while. And that is I'd encourage people. We've, we've presented what we are to you. You more than welcome to come and join us. And uh, look, I will guarantee you will change. Yes. Uh, it might not be everything you'd like to hear. We we do get to the point of this is what the word says and this is how we get applied in our lives. And we've all got the option and the choice to change and to allow the word of God to work in our lives or not. So I would like to encourage people to join. And I'd like to just remind you of, if you really want to find out more, I'd like to think that what we've said today has made you curious to find out more. Then I want to remind you of that uh, phone number and the email address. The phone number is 041-399-4414 or info at wafpi.org.za and we'll be happy to, uh, to answer your questions. But I hope that your interest in, uh, has been stimulated by what we've actually had to share today. And if you want, you can stop by the church, it's in William Moffat mm. Expressway, and you can just stop at Word of Faith Christian Center at the offices. Mm. They'll point you towards That's the right. FBI offices where you can go and get your enrollment, your application form. Oh, incidentally, applications close on, is it the 4th of December? Well, what we've done with, with the whole corona and lockdown, it's thrown things rather, uh, you know, we've had, to, we've had to think on our feet as we go along. And we've really said to people, come and give, put in your applications. We normally have a January intake and a July intake. And as I say, that's been messed around. So if people are interested, I don't want to turn people away that are interested. So I say to you, you come in, fill in an application form, and uh, we will accommodate you as best we can. And uh, uh, we're not going to actually put it off till next year. We're saying, come in, come and let's listen, fill in your form, and we'll make a plan. Thank you so much. Now, thank you, Pastor Stephen, our Dean of WAFPI, as well as Clive Bushby. He's the Operations Manager at Shepherd's Field Rehabilitation Center. And it's me, Tio Pretorius. And we were so it was so great being with you this morning and having communion. Thank, thank you, Pastor you. Stephen, for leading that. Thank you, Clive, for answering yeah. all my questions. And I had a really great time. And I hope our viewers enjoyed it as well. If you did, leave us a comment. If you have any further questions, leave it in the comments and I'm, we will get back to you. Thank you thank so you. much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Bye. No, I wonder if they'll take a of live. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye.